turn over to, to chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5. Loving in deed is your actions, and loving in truth is not lying, right? Let's, let's love neither in word and tongue, but in deed and in truth. So, you know, the false prophets are great at this, at lying to people, telling them they love them, but that's not real love. Lying to them, saying, oh man, everything's just great. You're just fine. Preaching, peace, peace. Hey, people like to hear that, right? You might try to comfort people, make them feel better. Oh, I love you, so I'm, I'm preaching you a message of peace when there is no peace. You know, we don't want to go and, and say I'm being real loving. Oh, Joel Osteen, he's so loving, right? He's going to tell you how great you are. He's going to tell you how wonderful you are and how wonderful everyone is and how wonderful God is and how wonderful the world is. And isn't everything just great? Yeah, because he's a millionaire, a multimillionaire, and he's living the comfortable life, and he's, and he's taking money from fools that are sending him in thinking that he's going to help them somehow. He's not loving in truth. It's a facade. It's a fake. He doesn't care about you. He cares about your money. We need to love in truth. Loving in truth means you're not lying. And you know what? When you love in truth, the truth is the truth. It has nothing to do with feelings at all. Truth is truth. So it's either right or wrong. Someone's doing something wrong, hey, give them the love and truth. Someone's doing something right, give them the love and truth. 1 John chapter 5, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Now, let's look at this verse real carefully and, and understand what it's saying. First of all, it's talking about salvation. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen. All you have to do to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do that, you are born of God. You're a child of God. Now it goes on further to say, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if you are loving God, the Bible is saying you will also love other believers, other brethren. Now that's not saying everyone that's born of God loves God. It doesn't say that. Because just make sure you understand that this is just saying, well, first of all, everyone that's born of God is uh, or whosoever believeth is born of God. But if you, if you truly love God, you're going to love your brother in Christ. You know what that tells me? If you've got a brother in Christ that you don't love, the love of God's not in you. You're not loving God. Because if you love God, you would love your brethren. If you love God, you'd love them that's begotten of him. You may think you love God. Is that not what the verse is saying there? It's pretty clear. Black and white. Let's look at verse number two. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So the verse is tying these two things together, loving God and loving the children of God, loving other believers. It says, well, I know that I'm loving the children of God. I know that I'm loving the children of God. I'm knowing that I'm loving other believers when I am loving God and keeping his commandments. I mean, how, how is that possible? Because when you're keeping God's commandments, part of God's commandments is going to be helping, <laughs> helping your brothers and sisters in Christ. Read the Bible, right? Read the commandments and, and see that it's about loving your neighbor as yourself and other parts, right? Where you're, you're going to do good unto your brother. So if you're keeping all of God's commandments, you will definitely be loving your brothers loving the brethren, loving other believers, because those are part of God's commandments.